Okay, uh, you've already looked at solving trigonometric identities. In this section, we're going to look at solving trigonometric equations. You see, not every equation, not every equation is an identity. Anyway, is this first one an identity? Uh, is it true that cosine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1 is an identity? Well, what does that mean? It means that it has to be true for all x for which the equation is defined. So no matter what, what you plug in for x, both sides should be equal. So one way to tell is to let, use your graphing calculator. Let, let, me, let me engage these first two here. Let's see. I'm going to engage these first two functions, which is the left side of the equation. This is the right side. Let me get rid of these for now. Disengage this. So if, in fact, this is an identity, then, then the graph of this, you should get one graph, right? Both, both graphs should be the same. So I, I'm using the, the trig mode. Um, and I'm uh, zoom trig, and I'm also graphing simultaneously. So they are they have the same graph, so it's an identity. How about the second one? Is the second one an identity? Is is it true that uh, is it true that um, two cosine x equals one is an identity? Well, is the equation true for all x? I don't think so. But again, what you could do is if you disengage these first two, and then engage these second two, you have the left side of the equation, you have the right side of the equation. When you graph this, you should get the same graph. And notice you don't. You you know you get different graphs, so therefore it's not an it's not an identity. So the question we're going to look at in this in this section is when is the equation true? So in other words, where do the graphs cross? Uh, the, you could use you could solve it graphically using the intersect feature, but we're we're going to solve it algebraically here. So what you would do is if you just divide by two uh, in this first one. If you just solve for x, if you divide by 2, you get the cosine x by itself. So the question is, where is the cosine of x equal to 1 half? Well, fortunately, that is a known angle. It's one of our known angles. There is certainly an angle in the first quadrant whose cosine is 1 half. Um, and that angle is pi over 3. There's also one, though, in the fourth quadrant whose cosine is 1 half. That would be 5 pi over 3. So how would you represent all the solutions? Well. This, this, uh, I said pi over 2, I meant pi over 3, didn't I? This pi over 3 angle plus 2n pi, which means that you could wrap around uh, uh, either to the right or, or to the left. n can be any integer. So th this is how you would talk about all possible angles that are coterminal with this one. Now, how would you talk about all angles that are coterminal with this one? It'd be 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. n could be a positive or negative integer. All right, so that, that, that's one, 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 one type of problem. Uh, there, there's little tricks on all these. Like, for example, how would you solve this for x? You have a cosine and a sine. The trick on this one is if you, um, if you add negative, if you subtract cosine from each side, and then let's say you divide both sides by cosine of x, you get the tangent of x is negative 1. And bingo, that, that's one of our known angles again. Uh, where is the tangent negative 1? Well, there's one in the second quadrant, which would be 3 pi over 4. But notice, the one in the fourth quadrant is 7 pi over 4, but couldn't you represent that in terms of this first one? If you let x be 3 pi over 4, and you add pi to that, you get the 7 pi over 4 one. So in other words, they're all going to be pi units apart. So if n is any integer, this, would, this equation would represent all possible solutions to the equation. Pretty nice, huh? Let's, let's do some more examples. In this one, uh, Oftentimes, what's helpful is to get zero on one side and factor. We're using the principle of zero products here, right? When is the product of two things equal zero? When either the first one equals zero or the second one equals zero. Now, where is the cosine of x equals zero? Well, that's whenever the x-coordinate is zero. So there's going to be one at pi over two, and then the other one's there's going to be one down here at three pi over two. So all the um, and then you could keep wrapping around. So it looks like if you go pi over two as your your base angle, then couldn't you start adding multiples of pi, inter integer multiples of pi? That would re represent all the angles. Now, where is the sine of x equal 2? Well, you should recognize that's impossible. Uh, this, this type of equation is called a contradiction, um, so that some equations have no solutions. Anyway, um, you know why that's impossible, right? I don't have to ask. You, you, you know why the sine of x can never equal 2. Let's, let's just do some more. And this one, um, if you want to solve this for x, we first divide by 4. You get sine squared of x equals 3 fourths. So when you take the square root, don't forget the plus or minus, of course. And so you get sine of x equals plus or minus square root of 3 over 2 again. Whoa, it sure is nice, all these known angles. Where does the sine 
where does the sine of x equal plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2? You know there's lots of them. There's one in the first quadrant, that's pi over 3. There's one in the second quadrant, that's 2 pi over 3. There's one in the third quadrant, that's uh, 4 pi over 3, and then there's 5 pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant. And then you can keep wrapping around, so the question is, how could you represent all these angles? What you could do in, in this particular example, from, from the picture, if you let pi over 3 be, be like your base angle, then if you add multiples of pi onto that, you can pick up all possible angles that are coterminal with this and coterminal with this one. So if you go pi over 3 plus n pi, and if you look at this angle here as your base angle, say 2 pi over 3, if you add all possible integer multiples of pi into that, you can get all these. All these. So this is how you could represent all possible solutions to the equation. Okay, let's do a couple more. Um, how about this one? Well, I'm going to solve this one. Notice this is the tangent of 4x. This is kind of tricky, this, this type of problem. Let's see, you, you would subtract um, 5 over and divide by radical 3. This sh You should rec recognize the tangent of something being one, negative 1 over ra radical 3. That, that is a, a known angle. Uh, that in the second quadrant, isn't the tangent sine over the cosine? So th this angle here, 5 pi over 6, has, has tangent uh, negative 1 over radical 3, and there's one in the fourth quadrant, 11 pi over 6, also has tangent uh, negative 1 over radical 3. So you could represent all possible angles as not x, but I'm saying 4x would either e would equal 5 pi over 6 plus, isn't this pi, pi units from this? So it would be 5 pi over 6 plus n pi. That would represent all possible angles. But we haven't solved for x yet. It's just the argument for x. The last step is to is to divide everything by by 4. It's really important that that's the very, very, very last step it is to solve for x after you've already found the angles. So there you go. That's all possible angles that make the equation true. Um, now, on some of the homework, it'll say, okay, I don't want all the angles. I just want the angles. This is the same e equation. How many of these angles that make this equation true lie between 0 and 2 pi? Well, if you had to do that, what I would suggest you do there is go ahead and, and find all possible angles and then just start peeling them off. Start 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 peeling them off until um, until you're you're more than two two pi units apart, or t more than two two pi units. So the first one would be pi. Uh, it has to be positive angle. Five pi over twenty four is the first one. If you add pi over four onto five pi over twenty four, when n equals one, that becomes six pi over twenty four plus five pi over twenty four gives you eleven pi over twenty four. Anyway, if you keep doing this in this manner, just keep adding pi over 4 on to the previous one, which is 6 pi over 24. Just, just keep adding them on until you get to a number that's, um, that's beyond 2 pi. The, the last one makes sense. The last one that's going to work is 47 pi uh, over 24. Anyway, I'll let you, I'll let you, um, I'll let you uh, check those. All right, the last thing I want to do, now what happens if, it's, if you have an equation and you don't have one of our um, one of our uh, special angles. What if it's not rigged? Well, let's look at this one. 5 secant of x minus 6 equals 9. If you go solving this for x, you would add 6 onto both sides, and then you divide by 5. You have secant of x equals 3. I would suggest maybe converting that to cosine. Cosine of x is 1 third. So I want to find all values of x. Think of it as angles if you want. All possible angles whose cosine is 1 third. You draw a picture here. There is an angle in the um, in the first quadrant, whose cosine is one third. I don't. In fact, if you want to know what the exact value of that is, you would you would write it as inverse cosine of one third. That's the end. That is the exact answer. That is the angle in the first quadrant whose cosine is one third. Um, if you enter that on your calculator, though, you're going to get an approximation. You don't want that. But you notice, though, there's also one in the fourth quadrant. So how would you represent this angle? Well, anyway. So so what I was getting at. Let me start. For this angle here, if, if your base angle is inverse cosine one third, then if you go two n pi around, you're going to pick up all possible angles that are coterminal with this. But what about this one in the fourth quadrant? How would you represent this angle? Well, it turns out there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, it has the same reference angle as uh, inverse cosine one third, so I'm, I'm just going to call it negative inverse cosine one third. So I, it's, it, instead of going uh, counterclockwise, I'm going clock, clockwise. So this angle here could be represented like that. So how would you represent all possible angles that are coterminal with this? Well, once you have this one, couldn't you wrap around 2n pi? And so there you go. That's it. Alrighty, good luck. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.